All right. Uh, you know, it would be great if Dallas could play a full 60 minutes. That's my complaint. There has to be one. There it is. Um, this is a game that Dallas had to have, and they get it. And this is a Dallas Stars team that, again, I know they went to seven games. They lost to St. Louis last time uh, back in 2016. This series feels different, even though we're at four games, and both teams have won two, and I would not be surprised to see this one go seven. Um, High-sticking penalty early by, by Dickinson, and, and that didn't impress me. But uh, Tarasenko also makes him pay for it with a power play goal from Dunn and O'Reilly. So early, we're looking at a lead for the St. Louis Blues. And the Blues were definitely the better team in the first half of the period. Then it's something changes. And then with this Dallas team, it just feels like there's a click. And it just it just all it, it all works. And it gets going, and as soon as they get going, all's great in the heart of Texas. Uh Dickinson gets his his um he makes amends. He gets a goal from Sagan and Zuccarello. Great game by Tyler Sagan. Great game by Zuccarello as well. Uh, I would like to thank the New York Rangers for Matt Zuccarello. Uh, despite him getting injured in his first game with the team in the regular season and the playoffs, he has been dynamite. So it's 1-1. Then we have chances at both ends. I thought the St. Louis Blues were having a fantastic penalty kill, and I put on the board it was a great penalty kill, especially by Ryan O'Reilly. And then Spezza... And I put up a question mark because, again, during the playoffs when Spezza scores, I put up a question mark because I'm surprised at the offensive output by Jason Spezza in these playoffs. That, I believe, is his third goal of the playoffs. Radulov and Lindell with the assists. And I didn't notice any diving by Lindell tonight, so we can take that storyline and put it aside for at least tonight. So, at the end of the first period, somehow Dallas is up 2-1, to one, but... It's also worthy of note that Dallas had outshot St. Louis in the first period 12-8. to So St. Louis had the advantage early, and then Dallas chipped away at it. And this is what makes me nervous, nervous with Dallas. It's great when they come back from those, those first goals against him, and they have these great comeback stories, but man, it's going to come back and bite him at some point. Uh, second period starts. Haskinen has a breakaway. He's denied by Bennington. I thought Bennington played well in, up until that point. But the Stars were in control. Stars are in control of the game, and, and Bennington was really the one holding it all together. Uh, the reason this is still 2-1 to one, as late as it is is because Bennington is doing everything he can to hold it together. But there's little things going on here between these teams, little things after the whistle, little things during the play, and the officials are just letting it all go. And this is another one of those series that feels like they're letting a little bit too much go. Um... Klingberg scores from Sagan and Zuccarello, and it's an absolute bullet by Klingberg uh, that puts the Stars up by two. This is where I, I kind of let myself breathe a little bit, because again, two goal lead in the second period. With Dallas, I feel okay, because Dallas defensively is pretty solid. Uh, that being said, not long after, Faxa takes a penalty, holding on Sunquist. Very good play by Sunquist to draw the penalty. A uh, decent penalty by Fox. If he doesn't take it, Sunquist could have could have been in on his own. So, not going to complain too much about it, except the timing. Um, so the Blues have some some advantage here, but David Perron hits the post, and it is around this time that the ugliness starts. Um, at some point late in the second period, David Perron uh, slashes Ben Bishop across the back behind the net. Uh, Bishop goes down. There's no penalty on the play, and the thought process is this. Bishop does have a reputation for going down kind of easy and for kind of embellishing, so no call. Um, and, and upon seeing this, well, the star's none too happy. Now, in the meantime, Hintz scores. So Rope hints with the goal. Uh, Radulov and Ben with the assists. It's 4-1. to one. But the ugliness starts right about here. At the end of the second period, there's a bit of a scrum. And there's a scrum because Jamie Benn goes in and kind of gives a little bit of a spear to Bennington. Not a major vicious spear, nothing that the league needs to look at. But just kind of a, uh, your guy was in there hassling uh, my, my goaltender, so I'm sorry. But I will need to spear you now. Sort of that moment. And um, Bennington didn't take kindly to it, so he goes over and uh, lands a punch, which leads to a roughing call. And then... At center ice, and I didn't see which member of the Blues it was, but some member of the Blues runs into Bishop. Bishop kind of turns around like, are you kidding? 
And uh, then Bennington on his way by. Uh, two hands, Bishop. So Bennington gets a double minor. And uh, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm kind of surprised in looking at the fact it's at the end of the period. The fact that, uh, you know, Bennington had already thrown a punch and was leaving the ice and now he's slashing somebody. I'm kind of surprised there wasn't a misconduct thrown in there as well. Um, but it's four to one after two. And seeing all this stuff going on and stuff that's not being called, and it's both ways. I'm not saying that it's not, but uh, lots of um, little things going on here that makes me think that Game 5 could be ugly. And they interviewed Jamie Benn after the game, and Pierre Maguire basically asked about the fact these teams don't like each other. Is it going to uh, bleed over into Game 5? And he said, yeah, probably. Uh, these teams don't like each other very much, so yeah, that's likely. NHL, please take note because we don't want to have some kind of an ugly incident in the playoffs because the temperature keeps rising and the referees just seem to stand back and watch. Now, in the third period, all I wrote up here at the start was I'm hoping for a clean third period. In seeing all of these ugly incidents going on towards the end of the period, my concern was that Dallas would go out on the ice and some silliness would ensue because they're up by three and it could ensue either way or we could see some kind of a a fight of some sort and 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 or a dirty play. I was very very happy to see that didn't really happen. We have a very quiet first half of the the third period. But what made me nervous at the same time, they're up by 3, but it would be nice if they got it out of their zone a little bit more than they did. I can't stand anything more than a team going, "Okay, we're up by X amount of goals in the third period. Ah, we'll sit back and just um let them come at us with wave after wave after wave." And you could see uh, O'Reilly uh, put in a, a ton of effort. And Perron was trying to get something going. Um, and then Thomas gets a goal. It's his first career playoff goal. So congratulations to him on that. Petrangelo and O'Reilly with the assists on it. It's 4-2. to two. And and it seemed to um, to quiet the crowd a little bit. Make guys a little bit nervous in, 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 the, in the fandom. And uh, it, it kind of woke up Dallas. From that point forward, it felt like Dallas wasn't just giving them the blue line anymore. There's nothing more frustrating than a team sitting behind the blue line and giving them the blue line. Make them work for it. Make them jump offside. So after that goal, there were a few more offsides that were taking place. It felt like they, they really uh, made sure that that blue line wasn't just easily accessible. And the Stars did manage to hang on. Now, if you look at the shots, there were 12-8 Dallas in the first. 14 to 9 Dallas in the second, 12 to 5 St. Louis in the third. So again, and people are going to say, well, that's normal. It's normal that a team when they're ahead gets outshot badly in the third period. I still don't like it. Just because it's normal doesn't mean that I have to say, well, I like I like that the team that I cheer for in the third period decided to just stop going for the offense until after they'd already allowed a goal that made it a two-goal game and made it a little bit closer than than I'd hoped. And St. Louis was very close to getting that that goal to bring it to a one goal game, but Ben Bishop was there. Um, I thought that uh, uh, cooler heads prevailed in the third period, which is good. But again, uh, the NHL has to look at this. So you've got last night, you've got the rabbit punch by uh, Marshawn. Now, people seem to think that because I'm saying there's no suspension for that, that I'm just saying it's it's not anything. No, it should have been a penalty, right? It should have been a penalty. Um, I don't know if you can call a penalty on Nelson in the Islander game tonight for uh, giving uh, McElhinney a tap on the helmet after a goal goes in, but it's it's just it's bad sportsmanship. And uh, tonight, they let a lot of stuff go in this one. And again, last game, Dallas, guilty of some diving, Lindell especially, and that may very well be why some of the slashes and some of the things that were going on from St. Louis in this game weren't getting called. But there was also stuff Dallas did that didn't get called as well. So I'm not just singling one out. Uh, referees seem to be just letting stuff go right now. And uh, uh, Ron McLean said uh, during one of the intermissions in this game, he figures that uh, the NHL themselves will come out and say something about it. Uh, that the NHL themselves are going to say, you know what, uh, we need to step in here. Sorry about that, the mini board fell over. Anyways, um... So he figures the NHL is going to probably step in and, and just tell the officials, hey, keep an eye on. We really shouldn't need to tell officials they need to start calling penalties. Should you? Anyways. Huh. Um, Bennington saves 27 out of 31. Uh, Bishop saves 27 out of 29. 
It felt like St. Louis was trying to get to Bishop all night and trying to knock him off his game. And it felt like Bennington, for the first time in the playoffs that I saw, lost his cool. And so for St. Louis, they're going home. I'm sure Bennington will, you know, uh, get everything all straightened out for Game 5. I anticipate a war in Game 5, but I'm hoping it's a war within the rules. And I know, there's no rules in love and war, right? But uh, I'm hoping that we don't see um, anything ugly. And it could be from either side. You know, this is not a, oh, I'm anti-St. Louis, so I'm saying, you know, it's going to be ugly. No, it could be either team. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that uh, something something's done to make sure that things are kept under control. Um, really, really good game, really entertaining. Just a feeling that maybe the rule of law isn't being, being uh, applied correctly in places. But let me know what you guys think that watched this game tonight. I thought it was... Uh, uh, kind of a nail biter. I, I didn't actually relax until about a minute left. Because again, Dallas was sitting back and I thought if St. Louis gets that third goal, St. Louis proved against Winnipeg. No lead is safe against the St. Louis Blues. So I don't take anything for granted when it comes to the Blues. They're a very dangerous team, especially when they're behind. But again, let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, this series is tied and going to at least six. It might end up being the longest series of all the ones in the, in the second round, but we'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.